In today's video, we're going to talk about the icing conditions. You will be able to see and spot icing conditions both on the ground and in the air. Also, you will know what you should do in order to protect yourself against this icing condition. And at the end of the video, I will tell you a personal experience that I had flying the Boeing 737 into severe icing conditions. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. V1, rotate. The icing conditions on the ground are present whenever the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius or below and you have a visible moisture. Visible moisture means low layer cloud, fox, visibility below 1600 meters or standing water around the ramp, the taxiways or the runways. So even though it's not raining that day but you have some water on the taxiways or the runway, you are still in icing conditions. And what you should do if you find yourself in icing conditions, the first layer of protection is to switch the engine anti-ice on. Why do you need to switch the engine anti-ice on even though it's not raining? It's because when you apply thrust, the air that goes into the engine will be humid because the water that is on the ground is going to be flown into the engines by the air that is actually sucked into the engine. Okay, so that's very important to understand. Many people think that if it's not raining, it's not icing conditions. So let's say you have a clear cavalcade day, the typical scenario where you have a thunderstorm that leaves a lot of water on the ground you have a temperature of 9 degrees for example but now it's not raining anymore because the thunderstorm has passed but still you have water on the ground so whenever you apply the takeoff thrust the air that it goes into the engine will be humid since we have wet surface and the air that goes into the engines to produce the takeoff thrust will also take with him some humidity from the ground and thus if the temperature is 10 degrees or below this is an icing condition okay this is very important to understand when you switch on the engine anti-ice you also need to take this into consideration when you're performing your takeoff performances so when you're calculating your takeoff distance required your takeoff run required your v1 speed and so on so on you need to take this into consideration because when you use the engine anti-ice the engine will be less powerful thus your takeoff run will be longer as you can see this is a conditions that you find yourself and you can use the engine anti-ice to protect yourself against the icy condition depending on the aircraft and on the airline standard operating procedures sometimes some islands they ask you to switch on on the ground anytime you switch on the uh, engine anti-ice they also ask you to switch on the wing anti-ice okay and the important thing to understand is that you switch on the engine anti-ice anytime you find yourself in icy conditions so what does it mean is that you don't wait Wait for the eyes to build up and then switch on the engine anti ice. You switch them on anytime you are in icing condition. This is on the ground, so anytime you are on the ground, you have these conditions, you have to do this. However, in the air, the same conditions apply. So let's say you take off, you are into a cloud, and the temperature is 10 degrees or below. You need to keep the engine anti ice on until you have a static air temperature of minus 40 or below so when you have a minus 40 or minus 41 minus 42 even though you are still inside a cloud you can switch off the engine anti-ice why because at that very low temperature the ice accretions of the engine doesn't apply anymore some islands they have a procedure where they say even though the static air temperature is below minus 40 you still want to keep them on if you're flying next to a cb because next to cb since it's a very powerful cloud you might have some ice accretion anyway the difference between the engine anti-ice and the wing anti-ice again is that the engine anti-ice you switch them on anytime you are in icing conditions however the wing anti-ice you switch them on when you are building up some ice okay some aircraft depending on the aircraft model we have some visual spot that we need to check to see if there is an ice accretion there that means that the ice is actually building up there is high chances that the ice is building up on the wings okay 
But why we have all these procedures, why we do need the engine anti-ice, why we do need the wing anti-ice, is because the ice is very dangerous since it will affect the engine's performance and the aerodynamic characteristics of your aircraft. Since if you have a lot of ice on top of your wings, the lift will be different, will be less, the drag will be higher and the weight will be higher. So as you can see, you want to keep your wings as clean as possible in your engine protected. So we talked about the icing conditions on the ground. Okay, so 10 degrees or below and visible moisture. We also talked about the icing condition during climb. So inside a cloud, until your static air temperature is minus 40 or below, and the, the icing condition during cruise, which is the same as climb. So if you level off, you check your static air temperature and it's minus 38, so it's warmer than minus 40, okay, and you are still inside a cloud, you still need to keep your engine anti-ice on. But let's say that day we climb very high and during our climb out, our static air temperature is minus 45, minus 50 and so on. So we level off and we have minus 50. So the engine anti-ice can go off, okay? Even though you're still inside a clouds, okay? So you cruise, you're you still in clouds, all the flight is in a cloud, okay? You arrive to the top of the sand, you reach your top of the sand, and when you start the descent, even though your static air temperature is lower than minus 40, so let's call it minus 50 that day, okay, when you start the descent, you need to switch on the engine anti-ice. And on the wing anti-ice, following the procedures and the limitations of the aircraft, if you see that there are some icing building up on the surfaces of the aircraft. But why during this scene we actually need to switch on the engine anti-ice even though the static air temperature is lower than 40? Why? It's because during this scene you have idle thrust. And when you have idle thrust, it's easier to have some ice build up on the engines. We also need to understand the wing anti-ice and the engine anti-ice takes bleeds air from the engines, okay? So this will actually affect your performances both in terms of uh, power, but also in terms of pressurization. In fact, some aircraft have some limitations on the wing anti-ice operation at high altitudes. The manual for, for some aircraft tells you, you cannot use wing anti-ice above a certain level, because if you use them, the bleed that is taken by the wing anti-ice system is so much that the pressurization is gonna have will be affected by this demanding of the air from the wing anti-ice. So thus, if you switch on the wing anti-ice, you could have problem pressurizing your cabin. Okay, so that is all the things to take into consideration. Let me tell you a personal experience. One day I was climbing out, okay, we were into icing conditions, okay, so the temperature was 10 degrees or lower, we were inside a cloud. We saw also from the visual spot that we have on the aircraft that some icing was building up on the surfaces of the aircraft, okay. So what we did, we switched on the engine anti-ice and the wing anti-ice. However, the ice was so severe that the engines, even though the engine anti-ice was on, start to vibrate. So we had the indication on the engine parameters, the vibration level of both engines was outside the normal range, okay. So we need to understand that even though you use the engine anti-ice or the wing anti-ice in some severe circumstances, the ice can still build up. So what you have to do, as a part, we have specific procedures to follow in case of this happens. In my case, once we were into this cloud in icing conditions, we start to build up ice, even though the engine and the wing and the ice were on. We saw, looking at the fuselage, that there was a lot of ice in building up around the aircraft. We, were, we had both the engines and the wing and the ice on. After short period of time, we saw that on the engine's parameter, the vibration level of both engines were, was above, were above the normal range. So we, have, we had actually a high vibration on the engine number one, engine number two. We start to apply our procedures and to summarize, the procedure told us to disconnect the auto throttle and retard one thrust lever and increase the thrust lever. So reduce and increase power of the engines, okay? on the affected engine. This procedure is called ice shading. So what you are trying to do with the engine and the ice on, you are trying to clear the ice from the engine by increasing and reducing the thrust. We performed these procedures and after a short while the engine was clear, the vibration level went down and we were able to continue. So as you can see, in severe icing, even though you have the engine and the wing anti-ice on, 
you can still build up ice. You have a procedure for the engine icing, severe icing, but also you have a procedure for the wing. So let's say you have, you see that even though the wing anti-ice is on, you are building up some ice. The first thing that you can do is to change your level, increase your speed, because the higher the speed, the higher the temperature. Change the level, usually increasing the speed will help you out a lot on clearing the wings. Okay, so guys, I hope you understand a little bit better what is in icing conditions and when you should use the wing and the engine anti-ice. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll help you out. I wish you a good day and I'll see you in the next one. Check, we can set to 7-0, please.